All right, man. So, uh, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Josh from uh, Sarasota County, Florida. You said that you've done some time in the uh, prison system in Florida, especially the JIT camps everyone has been hearing a lot about. And how was these JIT camps, man? Was uh, I, have you, I'm guessing you've seen the one I did with Jake. Uh, yeah. And also, I think I had another cat on here talking about JIT camps. Is it pretty much how he says it is? Was that, uh, Cause see, he was taking a different route, man. You know, he was running with a certain clique and all that. Uh, but you, on the other hand, you kind of lone wolfed it out and stuck to yourself. You said some very interesting things that I want to ask you about. But how was it, man? How was it doing it the way that you did it by yourself? I mean, it's it's not easy for a neutral white boy for sure. Yeah. My first, my year and a day, I landed in a pretty pie ass dorm. So I didn't really, you know, I just had a couple fights, jump, whatever. But I didn't really do much time, so I got out, and I came right back. And when I hit, came back for the second time is when I really got to experience jit camp for, you know what I mean, full throttle. Okay, and hold on, the first bit, you said you got a few fights and some jumps. What happened, man? You know, just the average white boy crap. Always they they just try. picking on you a little bit or something? We're the minority, so, you know, they, they always want to try to feed on the weak and – there's a very few of us that survive it. Yeah. I know Straight up. Right. I know that's right. Um, you said something. We're going to get into that second bid when you went full throttle. But you said something along the lines of uh, some cats were trying to get you to join certain things, man. Oh, I've had almost every single set, you know, try to bring me home. But I've seen so many people getting finessed into that crash dummy shit. I was just lone wolf. I used to always tell them, hey, no disrespect, but, you know, I'm a one-man army. I'll, I'll get through this my own. How, how, like, what kind of groups came your way? I mean, I had the Bloods. And back then, back when I was in there, NPR, under the sevens that Jake talks about, it used to be NPR and another clique, I think, called uh, 1724. Both, both of the heads for those were in my dorm. I had both of them after a big incident happened. They stepped to me and asked me to join. I told them the same thing. But, I mean. What did, I, I what did they know. do after that? Were they a little disrespected? I mean, that's strange. Was it some black dudes that came up to you or was it other white guys? Yeah, it, it's always black dudes, you know. Because, I mean, that that's meant most of the shot calls is all the black kids. In my eyes, I've seen a lot of white crash dummies. But, hey, I, Jake was in there at a different time. And if he was putting on, he was putting on. I mean, salute to him. Yeah. No, that's right. Uh, and they didn't feel no kind of way when you said, no, nah, I'm good. Nah, because, I mean, I was with the boys. The certain people that would ask me, I, I was in the dorm with them for a long time because I did a lot of time at Indian River, you know? Yeah. And uh, they've seen me go through numerous and put me through numerous incidents, you know? So they they knew where I was at, but they were just kind of like, you know, you don't have to do all this if you just want to join. I'm like, nah, like, no disrespect at all. You know, that's how y'all get down, but this is how I'm going to get down. Yeah. And I just, I just stuck to myself. You know, I had a little tight new, tight knit group from the 941 that I was with, and that was just my people, and I would ride to the end for them. But for the most part, it was just me, myself, and I. Yeah, I know that's right, man. Uh, so you got out and went back. For your second bid and you said it was even more treacherous than the first yeah the first bid i i thought prison was a joke straight up uh-huh because I, I didn't and get where did you go the first time again indian river indian river and that's a jit camp yeah that used to be 19 and under okay that used to be called the actual gladiator camp baby okay. Bavard, whatever you want to call it all right but i got out I was out for 45 days and then got shipped right back there because I copped out 42 months just to get out of the county. And when I came back, everybody thought I went to work release and got kicked out because I had came back so fast. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, I went home. But I hit G-Dorm, and it was just on and popping from In there. The same place? 
Yeah, same place. I landed right back at Indian River. Second day in G-Dorm on the compound. Uh, we went to breakfast, come back, and then as they're finishing breakfast, you know, if you're like the first dorm with breakfast, you can take a little nap before count time, before, you know, the day starts pretty much. So we go to breakfast, come back, and I'm sitting there kind of like half out of it. And uh, in the Indian River, you're, you can control your lock from the inside of the door. It's got a little slit in the door. Uh huh. And then on the outside, only the guard can unlock it with a key. So you, they'd always come to the window and say, hey, let me holler at you. So I already knew what it is because this ain't my first rodeo. Who, the correctional officer or the inmate? Inmates, you know, a okay. couple, couple people come to my door. Hey, let me holler at you. So I unlock the door and instantly run, go right back to the back wall because I already know what's up. They bum rush me, take me up through there a couple times. Don't get nothing because I was notorious for it. as I'm getting jumped, I'll be talking cash trash. I would just constantly run my mouth because I didn't care, you know. Hold on, <laughs> you so why, gonna... why did they run up on you and how did you know it was coming? This is my second day in this dorm, so I know it's my TOH. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. So that's guaranteed got... to happen to everyone. Everyone. It don't matter. White, black, Hispanic, it's coming. And plus, I had a homie who, in the dorm. Who was responsible for handling handing these things out, man? Usually the head of whichever gang runs that dorm. So how do you know you don't get hit with, like, three different... Uh... Oh, You'll get hit with numerous ones. Don't think just because you got one, it's a, that's it. No. It, 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 it all depends. And I knew after after so long, I, I got used to a, a routine about every third week. I'd always be like, man, I know it's coming. Here it comes. Because about every three, four weeks, the dorm would switch up constantly because everybody would be getting moved out for yellow hats, come back, get swapped up, go to the box. So even so though you were there before some of these cats, they would come in and straight up do it again. Oh, yeah. The dorm will change up so much. You know, it might be a blood house this week. Next month, it'll be a seven house. And then, you know, it'll switch back and forth or they'll they'll collide together and they'll just constantly anybody. They'll just, you know, what I mean, constantly be taking people up through there. And I knew about every three, four weeks I was getting it because I would not pay rent. And I didn't even get money. I didn't care. But they weren't taking my pride away from me. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. So, See, I mean. Well, but your face looks pretty in, intact. So, do oh, they, I got, do they do... I, got, I got a scar here all over the back of my head when they beat me with lock one good time. They, they got me with that lock on two different occasions. And one time, boy, they lit my head up. With a lock and a sock, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh. And that's a part, and that was just a part of the normal routine. Yeah, because I was a white man, boy. That I wouldn't, swear to God, bro. I, I was would, a white I boy that would not some, get down. If someone hit me with a lock, man, they better hey, never see me again. Because I'm, I'm gonna do everything in my power to take something from him that he. Yeah, you know, yeah. one thing about me, dude, I'm not really confrontational, man. But my get back. Is strong. I don't care who I. I don't care what I, I would. I would end up getting probably life, man. For real, people coming Here. in on me every three weeks with locking a sock, jumping me. Hell nah, man. I wouldn't stand for that, man. I'd be. I'd get the biggest damn, uh, you know, piece of steel I can find. You know, hey, that's kinda, crazy. After about the second, third time, I used to kind of get a kick out of it, yo. Honestly. <laughs> oh, man, a lot, I mean, fists is one thing, okay? But when they're cracking your freaking skull open with a lock and a sock dog, that's some other shit, you know? Yeah, the second time they came out with a lock, boy, they weren't getting my head. I held one of them against me so hard that he was the one mostly getting hit with the lock. They got me one good time on the second occasion in the ankle, and I could barely walk for about a week. Damn. I don't know but, which uh, one would be worse, the ankle or the head. <laughs> <laughs> the ankle I'm, sounds like it hurt. An, boy. The ankle hurt ten times worse than in the head, man. Oh, I bet, man. I bet. And uh, when they split my head up and ballooned my face up, my, my my dad came to see me that that past weekend, that that next weekend, and he seen me and his jaw just dropped. And I said, "It's all good, man. It ain't nothing." And I I, I wasn't getting money for like the first year or so. 
So after that, I started begging my dad, like, please, man, give me some money. So I actually got a reason to go up through this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let me, let me get some kind of something to level my mind out at least. But I used to get a kick out of it. Like, cause I used to be like, Hey, it's just my karma coming back. And I, I love pain. So it's like, come on, let's get it. And what happened every time we got injured? They ever take you, they take you down to medic or anything? No, nah, I, I, I was pretty good at it. There, I had one one good incident where I got lined up by three three dudes, and they got jumped right at the end while I was fighting the third one. Four, four dudes jumped me. And I swear, I thought they broke my collarbone. I thought they broke all my ribs. They split my eye, knocked my front tooth out. And, dude, I couldn't lift my arm up. I could barely breathe. And hold on, you said that you said three dudes lined up. What are you talking about? Yeah, they line you up. You got to fight numerous people back to back to back. No, no breaks, straight up. You fight one and instantly have to fight another one, and then fight another one. And it just depends how long the train is. You, you understand what I'm saying? I do understand what you're saying, and that shit in Virginia would never fly, man. Yeah. Never, man. Yeah. It, it, it's pretty wild, but the, these are the prisons that are shut down now. Now it's all spread out, like how Jake talks. It's all totally different camps. But um, yeah. We, after that, when they lined me up and messed me up pretty good, we went to Chow, and actually the lieutenant seen me because I could barely move, walk. I was messed. I had perfect boot prints on my ribs, my back, all over. I mean, perfect state boot prints. And he pulled me out and he asked me what happened. I said, man, I fell in the shower. He said, yeah, all right, come with me. Took me to medical. That's when they knocked my tooth out. So they're checking me over. I've seen I'm split all over the place. What do you mean that's when they, oh, that's when the dude, the dudes knocked one of your teeth out? Yeah, he knocked my tooth out, split my eye. I thought he broke all my ribs. When they, when they lined me up and jumped me, they beat me pretty good that time. And they took me to medical and I kept saying, man, I'm good. Just put me back in the door. I'm good. And the dude, lieutenant said, nah, we're putting you under investigation, son. So they, they, they put me in AC confinement for about five days, I think it was. And then I got put right back in G-Dorm. Was where I, The G-Dorm was where I did most of my time at. And everybody in that dorm, because the head gang members, they stay there because, you know, they got the COs in their pockets. So they can get the dorm switched up any way they want to. So it it, it, it it's all uh, it's wild. But I went back in there, and a lot of people knew me in there, like especially the two head sevens, the two sevens that I was telling you about that asked me to come home. And I remember there's a couple kids in there from Jacksonville that were sevens. They come up to my door talking, about, "Oh yeah, we got another fresh white boy." And I just laughed at them, like, "Come on!" And the head seven come up there, and he said. Oh, that's just ball leaving. He ain't going to do it. He ain't, he, you know what I mean? He ain't, he ain't giving it up. And then it just started cycling again. <laughs> you started rumbling again? Yeah, it's it just the same routine. So, hold on, these again. dudes were trying to get you to join them, but at the same time, they were jumping no, you too? They were trying to make me pay rent, trying to make me break, you know, to fold under pressure. But because I wouldn't fold under pressure, Sooner or later, they came to me and asked me, why don't you just join, you know? Instead of going through all this hell, why don't you just join and become one of us? And I told them straight up, I said, because, you know, I mean, you got so many white crash dummies. Plus, I, I'm just, I, I ain't got time for all that. I, I want to stick to myself, and that's it. And then after they asked you to join, they still steady kept doing oh, what they did? Yeah, it, it didn't stop. It ain't stopped for shit. And I had two more white boys come from Sarasota. Mm -hmm land in g-dorm and these were you know like kids that didn't belong in prison you know kind of like a higher class kids that uh, uh, one little stupid fight ended them to landed them 10 years let's just say that and uh th these kids got big money and it was one of their birthdays and they they both maxed out put all their food in their locker and they had viso so i take their locker and put it in my room because I knew somebody was going to try to rob that shit. So I put it in my room. Why would they do? Why would they max out knowing that these dudes is coming around taking shit? It is what it is. Bring the pressure. We got it. We're good. You know what I mean? You're not going to scare me into not eating. 
You know what I mean? I mean, it ain't about scaring you, man. It ain't about the fear. I'm not saying that. I'm saying anyone in their right mind knows that why would they max out if they know it's just going to be getting taken? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I see that. But them boys, it was their birthday, so they wanted to, you know, throw a little party for everybody. So they go to Vizzo, and I got the, the locker in my room. And actually, you know, I swear it was probably 12 people run off in my room. And at this time I did, I had a, because one of them boys worked outside maintenance. So I had a poker probably, you know, probably 10 inch slab, but it was hidden in my vent at the moment. And when they run off in my thing, I was like, man, they choked me to sleep three times, stabbed me in the head. Damn. And, it, and at, the, at the time on the compound, a bunch of kids just went, got shipped off because somebody had threw a locker on somebody's head and caved it in and almost killed the kid. He had to get flighted out. And I remember as dude was choking me out, I looked up and seeing one of them picking the locker up over his head. And I'm thinking, damn, they're about to smash the noggin, boy. But no, they didn't. They smashed it and broke the lid off the, the locker. Got everything. This is, this is the incident that made them step to me and ask me to come home, the sevens. So they, they all peel out because somebody yells troll because, you know, the whole goddamn dorm knows about what's going on. So they come back from Vizzo, see everything got took, see I'm messed up. See, I'm messed up. And but Buddy puts a big old poker in his waist. And the other one's a preppy kid. You know, he, he ain't really on that business. Something happened where – Buddy got caught with the poker right there in the dorm, so they cuffed him up, take him to jail, and we go to dinner right after that. And his buddy cr crashed in the chow hall, took off on somebody in the chow hall, took a little crash dummy move. So we're all laying down, and they're all looking at me like, you about to crash? And I'm like, man, come on. Y'all know me better than that. I ain't no dummy. I'm going to stay right here. So... Your lo your homeboys and all that, they were getting the same treatment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every white boy gets in. It's either you're paying or you, you're going to go through there straight up. That or, that or you're going to become part of the gang's little crash dummies. I mean, it is what it is. And on the compound, you got medium to, to community custody. And then in K-Dorm is where all the closed custody is, which was called the dungeon. And that was the... You know, the worst of the worst. Bro, That's I don't know what it is, man. But this shit's making me furious, bro. Yo, I, it is an insane world. I'm not kidding you. I swear, when I was on Indian River... I swear I to God, I would have gotten life, man. I would have gotten life in that damn penitentiary, bro. That's, that's, on, that's on everything I love. I would have done true. some vicious-ass shit. If that shit was happening to me... Every three weeks or so, man. Hell no. Here's the, here's the problem though: is all the all the little tough guy and all the gang bangers is be half of them are the ones that got the COs in their pockets that'll go and tell on them, get you up out of there, and set your ass up. As just, I, I didn't want to be a part of that dirty ass game. You know, I, I was sick of it. So I was just looking at it like it was my karma, and I was taking my my punishment. But it, I mean, it, it 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 made a name for me as having a big at big heart and somebody that was unbreakable so by the time i got turned 19 and got shipped to lancaster man, i didn't have no problems at lancaster not one unless i picked the fights you know what i mean because mm -hmm. everybody already knew about me i I, rem I remember this one time at indian river i fought a co all over the simple fact that i wouldn't sweep the day room right yeah and uh, he come in my room and tried to grab me by the throat. And as soon as he grabbed me by the throat, out of instinct, I just punched him right in the jaw. And he wrapped me up, and we started tussling around the cell. And they got this button on their waist, the panic button. I don't know if it's like that in Virginia. But as we're tussling, one of us hit that panic button. And all of a sudden, the next thing you know, man, that dorm got flooded with COs. But, see, but Buddy was cool. He said, nah, everything's good. So he left it alone. And during count time, as soon as they do count, he leaves out the dorm. And next thing you know, I got three people running off my room jumping me because he put a hit on me for that. 
it's, it's wild. Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. I don't know. Was there a lot of weapons? Like, a lot of shanks, like big shanks running around? Or was it mostly lock socks, razors? See, on, on the main compound at Indian River, when I was there, it was mostly locks that everybody liked to play with. Yes, there was knives. Because trust me, I've had a bit, couple few big ones. But in the dungeon, K3, in the dungeon with the closed custody fools, that's where you would see most of the knives and hear about all the crazy crap. But, I mean, I've seen fools get pulled out of dorms so bloody, covered in so much blood, you can't even tell what race they are. You know, they just look pure red. Their blues are red, everything, you know, so much blood. It's, it's wild. Yeah. CO's smacking the living life out of you for stupid crap. I mean, it's just... It, it, it'll make you have more of an authority problem than people realize. You know, more than it's supposed to help you, it'll make you hate authority even more. Yeah. Well, damn, dude, that's some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, you saw on probation or anything? You doing good now? Yeah, I mean, I've been out. I've only spent one night in jail. I mean, when I when I got out of the – when I finished the six months of the outpatient treatment part of it, I filed a motion to go ahead and terminate probation at that time, and they granted me it. So I've been off probation 100% since October of 2012. And then not, not long after that, I had to get out of there. I had to get out of my, uh, where I grew up. And I moved up to Jacksonville, went to school, had my first kid, moved to Maryland for two years, and now I come back. I had two more kids, so I've just been working – sticking to myself and my family ever since and race cars trying to find a hobby to keep my mom busy yeah i saw it on your instagram man uh you drive them or just oh, yeah. build them oh you do both yeah that's cool yeah. man that, that that adrenaline rush is like no other what's the fastest you've went uh low, low sixes in the eighth mile well how fast though what's the speed i don't know that's all gibberish to me <laughs> <laughs> it's it's about 120 and it's 660 feet. Damn. Yeah, eighth of a mile. What's the it's pressure like? like? Does it really like sling you back in your chair? Yeah, it pulls the front wheels off the ground. Yeah, I was in a car one time and uh, when I was younger, it was my friend's dad, and he had a Corvette. This was probably one of the fastest cars I've ever ridden in my life, man. And uh, he put he he had this thing that he did. Um where he would put a $100 bill or a $50 bill on the dash and clip, yeah. and he would say, hey, if you can grab this, yeah, you, you, can know, keep it. <laughs> you can keep it. And I was like, bad, bad, man. And then all of a sudden, you know, and when he hits it, I was like, I was like damn, yeah. you know. But, of course, you know, after initial first, second gear, you can probably grab it, but yeah, uh, that yeah is you weren't yeah. doing it in the first, second gear, you know. Yeah, that first initial G force is it's pretty wild. Yeah, man, and uh, I'll never forget that was my first experience going super fast. I didn't like it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, you, you get you get used to it, and then it starts to get an addicted, and you just want to go faster and faster and faster. I know that's right, man. But uh, well, that's good. You're out there uh, doing good for yourself and your kids. And congratulations, three kids. It's a blessing, man. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Crazy stories, man. Jit camp once again. Yeah. I tell you what, you know, I've seen some treacherous stuff, uh, but when it comes to stuff like that, man, like you say, uh, people coming at you every, you know, you got used to it. People coming to jump you every three weeks or two weeks, or whatever the case was. That shit makes me mad, man. It makes me Dude, mad I, as hell, dog. Like you have no idea. I remember sitting here in a sitting in a cell at Indian River one time talking to this white boy that was paying rent. He got big money, you know, so he had max out money every week. And I, I remember I just wanted to ask, I said, look, no disrespect to you, buddy. But I said, but you know, why, why do you, why do you break it off to them? Like he said, well, look at it my way. He said, I get 75 or whatever the max out was every week. Why not just give them a little bit of money and I can do my time in peace. And I said, because that's, that don't eat your mind up. Like, I don't even get money, and I'll go through it every day. If I have to, I don't care. Yeah, I, actually, you know what? That brings me to a story. 
uh, that I haven't even told on my channel before. That I'd done the same thing to this other dude that was kicking money to a certain group. And I asked him the same damn question. And he said the same thing to me, but in a different way. He said, look at it like paying taxes. <laughs> hey. And I said, well, shit. I understand right. completely now. Yeah, but I mean, I can't live with myself like that. You know? That's just... That's you know, who it's I am. A it's a different way of life, man. That's for sure. Some people just ain't... You know, it ain't within our DNA to be submitting and uh, stuff like that. But in all, all actuality, it's very similar to, you know, how the system out here in the free world is ran. You know, they might yeah, not come and jump you, but hey, you don't pay them taxes. You, they'll lock your yeah. ass up. You're damn know? right they will. So, uh, so either way, I understand exactly what that dude said to me, man, but... I appreciate you coming on the show and telling a few war stories. Uh, man. Yeah, I mean, it could go for days, but... Yeah, I mean, it's... There's only so much you can say without it. You know, it's just like... Hey, it's, it's, just, it's, it's all the same it's thing It's all the over same and over. damn thing over and over, and it's all treacherous. It's all messed up. Uh, gangs, man, I said this once. I've said it a million times on my channel. Uh... They prey they on the weak, it. man. They prey on the weak. And that's, you know, and not only that, but individuals is losing their lives behind the penitentiary, behind gangs and stuff. And that's why I speak so much against it, man, because for real, like, how anyone who preys upon the weak to me, man, is foul as hell. You know? Yeah. They're foul as hell. And if they don't change their ways, man, I, mean, I understand people. They realize what they're doing is wrong, and they change it up, and, hey, that's your past. It is what it is. Because I used to cause harm upon individuals, not, you know, going against weak individuals, but stealing from people. You know, I was a thief, uh, yep. and I, I acknowledge what I did was wrong, but at the same time, you know, that gang shit is for the birds, bro. You know, if you gotta, if you got if you got to have five... Six people, seven people, whatever, twelve people, like you say, run in there and steal a man's food. It's pretty, pretty sad if you ask me. It makes my blood boil, man. Yeah, there's a side of me that these people ain't never seen on YouTube, you know, and and that side is look, I got a serious anger issues, man, and and, <laughs> and like like the stuff that you said, I swear on everything I love, man, I would have ended up doing life in that damn Florida penitentiary behind that shit. Ain't nobody gonna be running once, maybe twice. You can get me, but I ain't gonna stand for no thir third time. You know what I mean? It ain't happening. I'm gonna make sure of it. You know? You just gotta laugh at it. That's how I used to do it. Hell no, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna laugh at that shit, man. I'm gonna be. <laughs> they, they cracked me in the back of the head with the damn lock dog, and then and weak. Then... They're weak. They gotta come in there with weapons. They're weak. That's it. That's how I used to see it. You're weak. Yeah. Well, you might need. You know, unfortunately, people need them to, you know, yeah. it, ain't, it ain't weak if you're the one going against the five, you know. That was another thing why I just never wanted that gang life because I knew I had so much to look forward to. I, I mean, I you made the right choice, man. You made the right choice. You you held your own. Uh, I knew there was, I knew for a fact, 110% fact, there was nobody that was going to crack this code. And that, that, that was, I would go to the grave for it straight up. That's good shit, man. And I salute to you for doing that, man. And I appreciate you coming on to the show once again. Just keep doing your thing out there, man. Doing the race car thing. Uh, you got any shout outs or any kind of social media you'd like to put out there for people to come check out? Or are you good? I mean, nah. I ain't, no, I ain't big on the whole social media thing. That's what's up, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Just keep doing your thing. Keep grinding and making that money, man. Hey, salute to y'all with the movements, man. Hey, appreciate you once Straight again up. coming on, man. Thank you, buddy. You have a good rest of your day, and happy late Father's Day, my friend. Back at you, buddy. Back right. at you. All right, dog.